Hello, welcome to QUT News. Hello. First tonight, the Prime Minister hits back at critics of Australia's climate change record. In a major speech to the UN, Scott Morrison was adamant Australia would meet all its climate commitments. After much criticism for not attending the climate change summit, Scott Morrison had a point to make, reinforcing Australia's contribution to global climate action. Australia is committed to leading urgent action to combat plastic pollution. It is choking our oceans. The Prime Minister defended Australia's emissions output, saying the government is doing its part. Reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 367 million tonnes more than required to meet our 2020 Kyoto target. The Prime Minister said the government will also meet its Paris commitments, pledging to reduce emissions by 26 to 28 per cent below 2005 levels by 2030. This is a credible, fair, responsible and achievable contribution to global climate change action. Following Greta Thunberg's stirring speech on Monday and large climate strikes across the world last week, Mr Morrison stressed the importance of not leaving the work for future generations. Above all, we must let our children be children, let our kids be kids, let our teenagers be teenagers, while we do the work positively together. Jacob Funk, QUT News. Yet another report has warned our ocean's ecosystems are collapsing. Scientists say it could cause devastating problems for our coastal communities. A worldwide group of experts has released a new report on our oceans. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says they are rising faster than expected. It says the ice sheets are melting and the oceans are warming. The take-on message of the report is that this is a wake-up call, that the, the usual IPCC reports really focus on the land, you know, and this is about the oceans. Coastal areas are expected to face bigger waves, more storms and a decrease in ocean productivity. 80% of Australians live within 50 kilometres of the coast, and experts say we need to take note. As Australians, we live on the coast and we really need to think about sea level rise and how to uh, plan to basically allow our ecosystems and our communities to get through it. There was a 15 centimetre rise in sea levels in the last century, but this report says there will be a further 110 centimetres by 2300. The report says that extreme sea level events that have occurred once per century could occur yearly. The Australian Marine Conservation Society believes we need to drastically reduce greenhouse emissions to prevent further damage to our coasts. Hagen Blight, QUT News. US Democrats believe the White House has delivered damning evidence for the impeachment of President Donald Trump. It released a summary of the conversation between Trump and the Ukrainian president which triggered the inquiry. The half an hour phone call between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and US President Donald Trump has sparked an official impeachment inquiry. The call took place in July after Mr. Trump ordered a halt in US aid to the Ukraine amounting to almost $400 million. It included requests from the US leader to investigate former Vice President and Democratic frontrunner Joe Biden's involvement in shutting down an inquiry into a company where his son was employed. The House Intelligence Committee chairman says the complaint is justified. I found the allegations deeply disturbing. I also found them very credible. The summary of the phone call was released a day after U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced the impeachment inquiry. Mr. Zelensky has responded saying nobody can put pressure on him. Stella Reeve, QUT News. The ACT has officially legalised cannabis for personal use, but the move may be challenged by the federal government. In Canberra from the end of January next year, it will no longer be illegal to grow two small plants of cannabis per person or four in a family. Users will also be able to possess up to 50 grams without prosecution. The ACT is now the first jurisdiction in Australia to legalise the personal possession and use of the drugs. But politicians deny it will make Canberra the cannabis capital as well as the nation's capital. This isn't Colorado and this isn't Canada. 
The ACT isn't setting up retail stores or dispensaries. The legislation conflicts with federal laws and police could still arrest users under those regulations. It is also possible that the Commonwealth will challenge the legality of the decision. The Health Minister is convinced it's a bad move. It's a very significant mental health risk. Um, I think that uh, the ACT has not taken these factors into account. Growing the cannabis may face another hurdle in Canberra. The plants don't like the cold weather. Elizabeth Neal, QT News. The Air Force showed Brisbane some of its might again today. It conducted the annual demonstration before the River Fire celebrations on Saturday, the finale to the Brisbane Festival. The C-17A Globemaster flew low over the city, missing buildings by little more than 100 metres. The RAAF operates eight of the aircraft from Amberley. They are most often used moving troops and combat vehicles or airlifting humanitarian aid. Drones can do all sorts of things, including keeping people safe. Now, technology to help them spot crocodiles and protect swimmers has been unveiled in Brisbane. First sharks were under the drone spotlight, now it's crocs. And drone users can spot the marine reptiles faster. New world-leading artificial intelligence added to the little ripper drone drops the operating delay to less than one second. In real time, so that they can stop the drone and investigate further. And those, that second could mean the difference between life and death in a potential crocodile attack. The new program can identify crocodiles with 93% accuracy. It also can be used to spot swimmers and various other marine life. And that's 22 different objects in the marine environment, not just crocs, not just sharks, anything from a conservation perspective to a surf, search and rescue or a safety perspective. Lifesavers previously had a 17% chance of identifying a crocodile in the surf with the naked eye. Drones can be monitored from a mobile phone, allowing for unprecedented access to this vision. In any piece of equipment we can add to the Lifesavers toolbox, which is the drone coupled with the AI, will make beachgoers safer in Queensland. The Croc Spotter drone program will be rolled out across far north Queensland beaches by the end of the year, with vision for long-term expansion, including Asia, Africa and the Americas. Sam Wilson, QUT News. Queensland's RSPCA survives on donations and it needs more money. So for 24 hours, sponsors will quadruple whatever the public puts in. Neglected, abused, abandoned or homeless. Every year the RSPCA in Queensland rescues and welcomes more than 56,000 animals to their shelters. And all of those cost around $25 a day um, to uh, feed and house and so we need to raise quite a lot of money to make sure all the animals are cared for. The RSPCA relies heavily on corporate and individual donations for more than 90% of its funding. It wants to raise half a million dollars in a new campaign where sponsors will more than match public donations. The welfare organisation saves an ever-growing number of dogs and cats. Last year we were able to adopt over 26,000 animals. But it's not only pets. Queensland's RSPCA is the largest rescue service of its kind in Australia and also deals with thousands of native animals, birds and reptiles. The RSPCA says the number of rescued animals always increases in the summer holidays, so it's really important to help them raise funds to find homes for all these creators, large and small. Federica Williamson, QT News. Looking again at our main story, and the Prime Minister tells the UN Australia is doing its best on climate change. And still to come, the newest royal baby debuts in South Africa. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has made a speedy return to the UK after his efforts to suspend Parliament were cut short. The PM is facing calls for his resignation as the Brexit chaos continues. Boris Johnson was forced to address the reconvened Parliament. But the statement must and will be heard. The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister defending himself after the Supreme Court ruled that his five-week suspension was unlawful. And it is absolutely no disrespect to the judiciary to say I think the court was wrong to pronounce on what is essentially a political question. His focus soon turned to Brexit, telling the Labour Party to face it or step aside. Three years ago, more people voted to leave the European Union 
than have ever voted for any party or proposition in our history. Johnson is refusing to seek an extension. They want Brexit done. I want Brexit done and people want us out on October the 31st. In reply, the Labour leader said the Prime Minister was full of bluster. A dangerous Prime Minister who thinks he is above the law. But in truth, Mr Speaker, in truth, Mr Speaker, is not fit for the office which he holds. Corbyn said he welcomed a general election, but only under certain conditions. If you want an election, if he wants an election, get an extension and let's have an election. Kristen Kemp, QUT News. The death toll from an earthquake in northeastern Pakistan has jumped to 37. The 5.8 magnitude quake has left more than 300 others injured. Families and relatives of those found dead in Pakistani Kashmir are mourning the loss of their loved ones. Reports say most injuries sustained were from walls and other building parts collapsing on top of civilians during the quake. This man says he started running, but a wall fell over him. Medicals at Mirpur Hospital said the most seriously injured patients are those with head injuries and fractured limbs, most of which are women and children. This man says his 10-year-old son was killed walking into an alley on his way to a class. The earthquake, which affected areas from Jhelum to Mirpur to the north, left roads split open and homes completely destroyed. Elizabeth Neal, QUT News. There are growing fears a glacier on Mont Blanc could soon collapse. The mayor of a nearby town has ordered the evacuation of huts on the mountain and two road closures. 250,000 cubic metres of ice is reportedly slipping up to 60 centimetres per day and could fall down the mountain. It reinforces fears about the effects of warmer temperatures on melting ice. An estimated 57,000 Indonesians remain homeless nearly a year after a tsunami. Aerial footage released by the UN reveals the extent of the remaining damage. The island of Sulawesi experienced a triple event of an earthquake, tsunami and liquefaction. The International Red Cross has confirmed the number of displaced people. Baby Archie has made his first public appearance on the royal tour of South Africa. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex took him to meet retired Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Harry and Meghan on their way to another royal engagement in Cape Town, but this time with Baby Archie. The family met with Desmond Tutu and his daughter at their foundation. Archie sat on his mother's lap while his father talked with the celebrated Tutu, an 87-year-old veteran and a Nobel Peace Prize recipient. You know me, it's, it's the opposite. Yeah. The responsibility. Later, Megan went solo, meeting with other mothers and their babies at Mothers to Mothers, a charity organisation which trains and employs women living with HIV as health workers. Share what's, share what's worked for our families and show that we are all in this together. She also met with female entrepreneurs and investors working in the tech industry. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are on their first overseas tour since the birth of their son, Archie. Elizabeth Neal, QT News. Rescue teams have released a whale caught in a shark net off Noosa. The Coast Guard, shark contractors and fisheries were all involved. Divers cut the net away from the whale, but it took nearly an hour. The baby whale was trapped a kilometre out to sea, directly in front of Noosa's main beach, and a small crowd gathered to watch. Anti-net campaigners argue they kill thousands of marine animals. Sport now and AFL grand final fever is mounting. Players have just two more nervous sleeps until the Giants and Tigers face off. Richmond is remaining coy about who will replace injured player Jack Graham in Saturday's showdown. It's been labelled a selection headache, with Jack Ross, Camden McIntosh and potential debutant Marlon Pickett fighting for the final spot. Camden's a great experienced player. Um, Jack Ross is a great hard inside mid that's a, a good replacement, um, you know, ready-made replacement for Jack Gray. Marlon adds a bit more X-factor. He'll get a game if it's because of his football um, and what he's done on the field, not because it's a great story. Jack Higgins also returned to the club today after a second round of brain surgery, deemed a success. On the other side, GWS vice-captain Stephen Coniglio has been ruled out. 
but Lockie Whitfield and Phil Davis are certain starters. Over to NRL, and Rabideau centre James Roberts is out of tomorrow's grand final qualifier due to a dislocated thumb. Despite that, the Raiders say the Bunnies are still very much a favourite. Just because we built, beat Melbourne down in Melbourne, I wouldn't say that makes us favourites. I'd say they've probably got more, more experience in terms of how many semi-finals they've been in. The preliminary final will be at Canberra Stadium tomorrow night. Georgie Hewson, QUT News. The weather details are next with Anna Ayres. Then remember the old phrase, happy is as happy does. Apparently, we are all doing it well in Brisbane. Hello. Light showers this morning meant a cooler day today in Brisbane and across the state southeast. Both the sunny and Gold Coast reached the low 20s, several degrees down from yesterday. In Ipswich, there was wind and rain with the possibility of a thunderstorm this evening. Around the nation tomorrow and it'll be a cloudy day in both Sydney and Melbourne with the chance of a shower or two. But the sun will be out in Perth and Darwin, climbing up to 34 degrees in the Northern Territory. Back in Queensland, it will be nice and warm right across the state tomorrow, with all regions reaching at least the high 20s. Rockhampton, Mount Isa and Longreach will climb past 30 degrees. On Moreton Bay, winds will be northeasterly 10 to 15 knots. Seas just below one metre. And the sun will rise at 5.33 tomorrow. A cloudy day with possible showers on the Gold Coast tomorrow, a top of 25. Showers are also expected on the sunny coast, reaching 25. The outlook for Brisbane over the next three days. Friday will have a chance of showers with a possible thunderstorm. Saturday, mostly sunny, climbing up to 28, but a chance for a bit of rain. And any precipitation we get will be very welcome. That's the weather for now. It's often said we make our own happiness. And in Brisbane, it seems we do a lot of it. A new report has revealed we're the happiest in the country. Brisbane topped the happiness scale in a new survey. The data says those in the River City enjoy a quality of life rating of 93%. So what's to love so much? It's a bit of a smaller community in the scheme of big cities. I really like the people. Um, it's super friendly. Brisbaneites had advice for the second place getter, Melbourne. Melbourne is very messy. Very, a lot of litter. I think we're a bit more uh, street proud in Brisbane. Perth came in third with an 88% rating. Sydney residents are the most unhappy at 76%. Back home, local businesses say it's the city's cafe culture that keeps us laid back. People in Brisbane to relax, tend to do stuff like this. They come to cafes and just drink coffee, eat food, relax. The survey also revealed locals feel our city offers a better standard of living, as well as a better quality of life. It's a better place to raise a family, and 75% of us are happy with our cost of living. The survey was commissioned by the Brisbane City Council, but they're confident the findings remain unbiased, with the data sourced from an independent researcher. Lord Mayor Adrian Schrinner says he's proud of the stats, but wants to reach 100% next time. Hannah Burstow, QUT News. That brings you up to date with QUT News. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye.